Grove man learned his punishment for murdering his mother and assaulting his father. Matthew Witt was sentenced to more than 22 years in prison. He pleaded guilty last month to second degree murder and first degree assault. The incident happened last July at a home near Eagle Lake. According to court documents, when police arrived at the home, Witt answered the door covered in blood. He told police, take me to jail, I did it. 68-year-old Elizabeth Witt died of severe head trauma and 71-year-old George Witt suffered multiple facial fractures. Court records show their son had beaten them with his fist. The man's father told police his son suffered from mental health problems. Construction officially started today on a new housing development. It's one that serves a growing need in the northwest suburbs. Eric Nelson explains. That's right, groundbreaking for the Sonder House Apartments took place on a frosty morning here in Brooklyn Center. The $35 million project is being built on the site of an old grocery store. Go. Things became official when city officials Go. tossed ceremonial dirt into the air. The complex will consist of 127 units and is expected to open in April of 2021. We're just excited to see this development. We think the developers uh, for this project are excellent. They've got a great reputation. If the key to real estate is location, 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 then this is a home run because the Saunder House apartments are truly at the center of it all in Brooklyn Center located within walking distance of a Metro Transit bus station. Love the location, uh, you know, just the proximity to all the nearby amenities, retail, grocery stores that was, is within walking distance really just kind of um, brought us, you know, made us interested in the site. The complex is being built to serve people and families who are struggling to find affordable housing, which is an issue in the northwest suburbs. For the city, it fills in a key gap of vacant land. I don't think there's another property in the, in the city of Brooklyn Center that I've had more residents ask me about uh, since the time that I've been city manager. When's something going to happen at Jerry's Food? Uh, so now we can tell them. This project has been a long time in coming. This chunk of earth I'm standing on has been vacant for a couple decades. In Brooklyn Center, I'm Eric Nelson, CCX News. A 143 unit apartment complex for independent seniors will also be built next to the Sonder House. That will be phase two of the project and construction begins in April. The same developers behind the Hollydale Gulf housing plan in Plymouth also have a plan to turn a Maple Grove nature area into homes. The Elm Road project would build 106 single family homes in an area north and south of Elm Road between Lawndale and Vicksburg Lanes. The proposal would build custom homes that would range in price between $650,000 up to $1.5 million. This area is in the Wyzetta School District. There are several homes that would be torn down to make way for the new homes. The City Council will decide on approval on Monday. The Planning Commission received about 20 pages of emails, many of them concerned about the loss of nature. The developer does plan to remove about 50% of the trees on the property, which is allowed under the city's tree preservation ordinance. City staff felt comfortable with the developer's tree preservation efforts. Breck schools have one of the most robust visual arts programs in the country. The pre-K through high school curriculum is designed to build up students' creativity and self-esteem. Reporter Sonia Goins has more in today's School Spotlight. I have a dream. All students participate in Breck's visual arts program. I have a dream. Including preschoolers. That. Today the young scholars learned about Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. What can I say about your dream? The young learners made a picture about what they could do to help make the world a better place. That's a good idea. Their little hands grasp crayons, drawing and coloring and using their imagination. Together. To put their designs and dreams on paper. There. It gives them a chance to reflect and to work on their ideas and be proud of what they made. Oh, that's way better, don't you think? The visual arts curriculum is more complex for older students. You know, this comes down here and this goes up here. 11th grader Douglas Bagley is adding charcoal to paper he dyed earlier. Right now I'm trying to get like shading so I can get a perspective of where the light is coming from so I could get better definition. Lucas Lewin Mills is dyeing his paper using intense ink. We started with spraying this with water and then dropping different little 
dots of ink in there. He's going with an abstract theme. His artwork features vibrant blues, coral, and green. I'm kind of just setting the tone because I'll probably go over this and do a drawing on top. Students are working with a one-point perspective. They drew their favorite spot at Breck and had to include a door or a window to see through. It's working from inside the school, but they have a portal into the outside world in some way. Michael Sagar is the visual arts department head. She says students are encouraged to use their imagination. They get to kind of play their hand at both new materials, new processes, but also imagery that is really important to them. Visual art is celebrated at Breck. A gallery showcases the energy and enthusiasm of the talented artists. In Golden Valley, Sonia Goins, CCX News. Birch Grove Elementary students got a special visit this week and it came just in time for Black History Month. Siyama Congo Roots is a group that performs African music. For three days during music class, students got to sing along and hear stories of Africa. Teachers say the Congo Roots performances were special because it connected with students on another level. Uh, their music um, has a lot of connection with the kids here. Uh, a lot of our kids uh, are from Africa. They have family in Africa, grandparents in Africa, and uh, so uh, African music is very important to them and their culture. And as we go to break, we'll leave you with a little bit more of the music. Benilde St. Margaret's won the 2012 State Class AA Boys Hockey title, but they haven't been back to state since. The Red Knights look to change that as they met Blake for the Section 6 AA title at Mariucci Arena. First period, Blake's William Latsky lasers the shot short side for the first goal of the game. Second period, Benilde's Blake Messenberg sneaks the shot through traffic and in. Red Knights draw even at 1-1. And less than two minutes later, Benil takes the lead on a rebound goal by Charlie Bischel. The Bears come right back though. Joe Miller walks in, snaps a shot home, and that's two all. The Red Knights go back on top late in the second. Asher Connolly gets the goal, hooking in the backhander. 3-2 BSM. Fight continues in the third period. Blake's Will Svendo pinches in, buries the loose puck, and we are tied at three. Overtime is required, and late in the first OT, Blake's Gavin Best Breaks in alone, and he is brought down from behind, and a penalty shot is awarded to the Bears. And Best, with the section title on his stick, beats Benil goalie Carson Limesad. The Bears win 4-3, and they are Section 6 AA champions. The Maple Grove girls basketball team is shooting for its third consecutive Section 8-4A title. As Jay Wilcox reports, they're ready for the challenge. After a 21-5 regular season that saw the Crimson win nine of their last ten games, they're ready to roll for the playoffs. Um, we were really excited to be conference champs. That was a really big deal for us and kind of unexpected, but we were really glad we could push through and get that one done. I think we're all just really excited to start sections and go back to the state tournament. You know, our goal is to get better and better as the year goes on. I think we're playing our best basketball right now. And, you know, to hoist a conference championship trophy, that's always a big deal. And, and so we we got to celebrate that for a night before we got ready for sections. And so, yeah, no, I think it's been a great regular season. One of Maple Grove's losses was to St. Michael Albertville, the top seed in the section. No doubt they'd like another crack at the Knights, but you can't pencil those teams into the final just yet. The Section 8 field is as tough as ever this winter. Our section is, is I think we get overlooked a little bit because of some of the outstate schools, but th this section is a tough, as, it's as tough as I think any section around. Yeah, we're definitely always reminding ourselves that it's one step at a time. The next game is our biggest game of the season because it's the next game. Cook says that a lot to us, and I think that's it's a really good reminder because it's, you know, you lose and you go home. So we definitely don't want to be in that situation, but we want to be playing St. Michael at the end of it. So. Maple Grove's been in a lot of close games against high caliber clubs. That should have them ready for the intensity and nerves of postseason play. A anytime you have, you're, you're playing big games on a big stage, I think that only helps. Jay Wilcox, CCX Sports. 
We'll have highlights of Maple Grove Brainerd Friday afternoon here on CCX News. The section semifinals are on Saturday. The section 5-4A playoffs tipped off Wednesday night. While most of the quarterfinal games weren't close, one local squad had a thriller. Fifth seeded Champlain Park playing at fourth seed Spring Lake Park. The Panthers' Taryn Richard hits a quarter three. She scores 15 points in the game. SLP leads by three in the first half. Michaela Counts hits a three-pointer for Champlain Park just before halftime. Rebels lead 29-27 at the half. Second half and Spring Lake Park's Maddie Jean drives the lane, misses, but scores in the putback. Panthers are up by seven with six minutes to go. The Rebels come back. Maya Fitzpatrick off a great feed from Maya Dubois scores two of her 25 points. CP back to within one. Macy Smith hits a long two-pointer with about a minute to go to put Spring Lake Park up by one. The Rebels are tied on a free throw and the teams go to overtime and then a second OT. In the second overtime, again, it's Fitzpatrick from Dubois scoring two more in the paint. Then the Rebels clear out the right side that allows Gina Steffro to get past her defender, score the layup plus the foul. Champlain Park wins 74 67 in two overtimes. They'll play Park Center Saturday at 1 o'clock at Anoka High School. Hopkins, Wyzetta, and Cooper were all winners Wednesday night in Section 6 4A.